Welcome back. You're still watching Deborah Contestant on the 5th day of March 2024. My name is Sam Gituko and I want to introduce the panelists who are here in studio. I have the Member of Parliament for Nyeri Town Constituency, Duncan Madenge, who is also a member of the Health Committee at the National Assembly. Good morning, Mushmua. Good morning, Sam. And you've been away for quite so long. I've been, been away for quite some time. Uh -huh. um, with the challenges of uh, that come with uh, with uh, being a member of parliament. Okay. And uh, like now we've had a f quite a few months, a few weeks, uh. trying to sort out the issue of uh, bursaries for needy children okay. uh, in the constituencies, and that has been cross cutting across uh, every constituency. All right. Uh, so sometimes we have to go back to our employer and sit at the employer's desk in the constituency. Okay. Then as All right. Back in Nairobi. That's fine, much more. Welcome back to the Thank show. You. It's just about uh, to conclude the first quarter of the year. Yeah. Says a lot, yeah? The first Do quarter and the third quarter of the financial year. Dr. Brian Lesheng is the chairperson of RUP PHA, Rural and Urban. <laughs> Say that? Rural and Urban. <laughs> this is <laughs> Rural and Urban Private Hospital Association of Kenya. Uh, All right. Yeah. All right. Good to see you. Good morning. Yeah. We have uh, Dr. Dennis Miskela. I hope I said the name right, Deputy Secretary General of KMPDU. Good morning. Good morning, Sam. And we have Dr. Simon Kigondo, President of the KMA. Good morning. No eating is for doctors. <laughs> I said good morning. Uh, it is morning. Uh, good morning. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, we're here because the crisis continues in different parts of the country. We'll be looking at the pictures of uh, what has been going on. On Friday, the Kenya Medical Practitioners and Dentist Union staged demonstrations across different parts and were able to see the pictures. Dr. Miskela, we were hoping that um, after that night meeting between yourselves and uh, government officials on Thursday, that um, at least there would be a sign. Maybe you can help us understand what exactly transpired to the extent that um, you are still on the streets the following day. Thank you, Sam. Uh, first of all, the fact that we are on strike doesn't mean that uh, negotiations are broken down. It doesn't mean that uh, we are not talking. Strikes are simply the foundations upon which uh, those conversations start. Because uh, this, because of the strike, the employer comes to the table and talks. So we thank the government for the efforts they put in place, and we thank uh, the head of public service for sparing some time to come and listen to the grievances. So for the first meeting, it was an inaugural meeting where we were just supposed to come and understand the issues and the mediator was supposed to come and uh, tell the team uh, where we are with the mediation. And I think uh, both parties were able to prosecute the issues quite well. And by the end of the evening, as a union, we left uh, be assured that uh, the government had understood uh, the depth and the, the level of uh, anxiety amongst my members. So the, the subcommittee that was formed to then I uh, pull out the issues and uh, put them on priority levels. Mm -hmm. And um, it, that's, that's still meeting even today. They'll be meeting uh, to find a possible solutions to the immediate uh, grievances and uh, how to sort out the long-term issues. So we're proceeding well and um, we hope that uh, at the end of the day, the government uh, will do or will meet the end of the bargain because this strike, Sam, is not about KMPDU making any new demands. It's about KMPDU asking for old debts to be settled. Some of them as old as seven years of CBA agitation. We read out letters, nobody responded. We went to court, sued the government, court ordered them to settle some of these things, and those orders were ignored. So the only thing that was left by the workers, the only power that the workers were left with, was the power to withdraw their labor. And that is what happened here. The members of KPDU with the drill, their labor and skills, <coughs> not because we don't have our patients, mm -hmm. but because that's the only thing you can do to compel a stubborn employer to come to the table and meet the end of the bargain. I want us to listen to your Secretary General as well as um, the Head of Public Services that spoke after that night meeting. Is what they said. Right, still. As we discuss those things. Because um, as a union, we only call the strikes uh, after meeting our National Military Council and having a return to work formula, which we don't have. As far as we are concerned, there are no strikes. If there's so, there are people who are, who are not working. Those are now people who are deserting duty because the court has pronounced itself. 
So you say your employer is a stubborn employer. The head of the public service says that um, from what they know, there's no strike, you're absconding duty. Who should you believe here? I think uh, the only person who has absconded duty for the last seven years is government. Because when we signed the 2017 CBA, which took 100 days, plus some days of our officials being jailed. When we finally signed it, it is the government of Kenya, the Ministry of Health lawyers, who took the collective bargaining agreement to court and deposited it in a court order. They never implemented it. It is came PDU that in 2021 sued the government in a court of law, and the court ordered them to implement and give a report in 60 days. They ignored the court order. It is the government that has made the internship policy that they have not implemented. It is the government that made CAP 253, that makes the, uh, the uh, describe where an intern is, who has you know, the CAP 253. So basically, in all this, it is the government that have absconded its duty and the promise that it made to the healthcare workers of Kenya and the doctors of Kenya, not KPDU. KPDU has simply joined the government in a seven year old strike. But when they say there's a court order suspending your strike, what are you doing with that information? As KMPD, we respect the courts. As KMPD, we respect court orders. The only person who has ignored court orders for years on end is the government of Kenya. Some court orders as old as seven years, some as old as two years. The only thing that as KMPD we believe in that somebody cannot come to the table of equity and justice with the dirty hands. So government cannot then run to the same court that they have contempted for seven years and claim. to come seek that this court should give them justice. Yeah. Let them go wash their hands, then come to the table of justice with clean hands. Yeah. Is there an order suspending the strike? There's an order that suspended the strike notice. Mm -hmm. That's all I know. And? And we hope that in that order, we are going to be able to solve the problem. Because remember some, oh, what that, let, let me just explain. The, the court orders, uh, don't solve the problems. Yeah. We must not allow the law to turn the like tires into knots yeah. that the law won't untie. That order will not sort out the, those four doctors who died from suicide because of the frustrations at work. Yeah. Those orders won't solve the four doctors we are fundraising for because there's no medical cover. Those court orders will not solve the problems that we have in the counties you, you because employers me. don't respect court orders. You just told me that you respect the courts. Yes. And the government should have respected the courts. Yes. There's a an order, as you say, suspended the strike notice. The orders were six orders. Uh -huh. Sorry. The order suspended the strike came at number six. Uh -huh. Because the judge was alive to the fact that there are issues that might be sorted from one, two, three, up to five before order six comes into effect. So far, the government came close to respecting that order by calling the whole of nation committee to meet. But even in that committee, governors didn't come when governors are almost 90% the problem in this current situation. So if some the employer contempted that order, so you cannot expect me to ignore it, order one, two, three, four, five. Then finally come and tell me that respect order six. There's a reason why the judge didn't start with the suspension first, then everything else. Sam. Yes, Dr. Kigono. Sam. Mm. Um, in 2017, one day after they jailed our doctors because they refused to comply with court orders that would have otherwise led to the government not obeying court orders. We were in court. My camera was rolling. The, the current CJ was uh, the bench judge, the three bench judge, and the COG lawyer. Was, uh, was told to ensure that the doctors were released from jail. Mm -hmm. She refused. <clears throat> she said the doctors are defying a court order to call off the strike. And I, that's when I saw uh, this current CJ for the first time and I was very impressed. He asked her, you want them to call off a strike. Have you solved the problems that led to the strike. And that was the day I knew this particular person will, will make it. Because you can't run to court, as Ms. <coughs> Hela has said. You yourself have refused to solve the problem. So this is the trick the government uses. 
cause a problem, then pretend, run to court and uh, say that uh, court over a card. Always remember the CJ's word. <clears throat> Have you solved the problem? And let's not go around. We, do, we didn't need to go to court to have a court order to post interns. We didn't need to court uh, to implement the CBA that was made. I, I was in the union in 2016-2017. Dr. Machonda and I are the ones who went to court for this court order that has been given. I, you look on my uh, social media pages when we were in court and the court said, yes, the CBA has not implemented, pay these people. And finally, the reason we had a 100-day strike and to have a CBA is to prevent problems like we are having with the current CS. Mm. We knew people like the current CS will come and it's not a problem. Playing politics with health is known. But when you have a legally binding document, like a CBA, whatever the CS says, the, we, are, we, we, we go back to the legally binding documents. We know they are playing politics. We do also, not, sorry, no, the, uh, the, the cabinet secretary of health. How is she playing politics? You, um, uh, we will change the law. We will change the law. These do we will change the law, you see. So what does she mean? She means that we want to uh, start underpaying the, our interns. Uh, so they will do a law change to try to remove the CBA and things like that. The CBA, our, uh, as doctors, our, our weak link, so to speak, not weak link, is the, our most important people are the interns. And if you do not enshrine them in the law that protects them, then they are subject to manipulation by the state. And therefore, we put them in the CBA. That CBA, that 100 day strike was not for nothing. It was to protect the future of medical care in this country. Okay, Doctor, I'll get back to you because uh, the question of uh, medical interns is quite a unique one and we'll discuss it uh, at some point. But let me begin with the Honorable um, MP uh, from Nyeri Town. Yes. And when you listen to this, because there appears to be sort of, um, there are talks going on here, there's a committee already is, is put in place, there's a suspension order that they say there are others that should have been implemented before the last one is implemented. So what are patients supposed to do? And what are your thoughts, especially as the House of Legislation, looking at this crisis? Thank you, Sam. As we are engaging here, we have Kenyans who are suffering because they are sick, not out of their will, but because sickness can befall any one of us, including this panel here. Some, on Saturday night at 10, 10 p.m., I got a call from a distress constituent mm -hmm. who had, they had gone to PGH Neri. The lady was, had interuterine bleeding. They could not be uh, admitted. They were referred to Madari. Uh, mission hospital, Madari needed them to have 50,000 shillings for admission. And uh, we had to start a fundraising at night, 10.30 p.m. So that is the reality of the situation, that as we have all these legitimate grievances, the back and forth about court orders, and which should come before the other one, mm. Kenyans are suffering. Today, I have earned all my life, except for the last one and a half years, from practicing medicine as a dental technologist. So I have served patients in this country. Our patients are crying. And for me, I come from the point where I am asking, in the middle of all these two powers, the medical service providers and the knowledge that we bear that needs to benefit Kenyans, and the government holding the past strings, who will become the bigger person so that all of us are not suffering. I know the medical the, the professionals are going to say they have had this before. But we have a, the reality is we have a stalemate. And maybe rather than this discussion about the court order of 2017, and this court order and the other court order. Can we table all these court orders before the judiciary and ask for an advisory on the way forward? But in the meantime,
who is going to stand in the gap for the Kenyan patient. We have the government on one say, side saying we do not have sufficient money to onboard all the interns. And it's not just a question of onboarding interns. Mm. Interns have to serve in hospitals that are designated as internship centers. Those hospitals, how many of uh, have the requisite capacity, facilities, and workload for interns to be able to effectively go through the one-year internship and therefore become you know, uh, independent enough to provide medical services? The question of who the employer is. With the onset of devolution, the doctors who are within the level six hospitals and the national referral facilities are under the national government. The doctors who are in the counties right. are under the respective county public service board. That is the law. But we can keep arguing about the merits and the demerits of the law, the supremacy of the law, but at the end of the day, Kenyans are suffering. My appeal is that now that government has said, look, we are entering the new financial year, we have started budgeting, we are begging for uh, patients for the next three months until we begin the new financial year in and July. Of course, we have the international uh, The Secretary General but, and the Chair uh, of KPDU and uh, the Chair of KMA. If we have been patient enough, and I agree, it's been seven long years, 2017 to most 2024. We player. have Who been patient the most enough. We have endured the suffering. Could we please give Kenyans the benefit of doubt in this Your government feedback by the tail end of being this patient program. for the now, next let's shift four months a little bit into the new financial year. You love, and let's see the English how the budgeting Premier process and of course, is going to provide for the financial requirements. It's not Isaac just about Sela, the pay for the interns, Kenya. there is and also we the will capacity enhancement of the internship centers. The existing program. ones are now, not enough. We need to bring on board a little more bit. internship centers. All right, um, and I'll be waiting to hear what uh, the doctor's representative has to say about that. But uh, Dr. Nishenga, so when you observe this, uh, and the constituency that you represent, um, what are you thinking, especially looking at these challenges that uh, it's not the first time, like he says, seven years ago, but it was also not the very first strike by the doctors. What are your thoughts about the challenges that the doctors are experiencing, but also what the patients have to go through, the larger public? Well, thank you, Sam. Um, I, 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 I want to like, look at this slightly differently. The, the challenge we have is, uh, you know, I hear my colleagues saying, Nahumicha must go, uh, all this. I, I, I think we, we are probably backing up the wrong tree. This is why I think so. Um, if you look at that whole of, whole of nation approach statement mm -hmm. that was issued with my friends here in the middle of the night, uh, well, on the, on the union side, the statement was read by the SG. Uh, on the government side, the press conference was given by the chief of staff. Uh, so I, I think that in reality, Nahumich is just following orders. You know, she is basically just doing what she's supposed to do. Uh, and, 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 and you know, it's, I mean, we have to be honest as a nation. The last time we had ministers or cabinet secretaries who are truly independent, uh, who you could say that this, whatever position they held was theirs, is during Mwai Kibaki's time. So this is the last time when you see, if you saw Carissa Maita moving around town, you knew that was Carissa Maita's thing, you know? But today what we have, and uh, forgive me for using this, we have automatons and drones in the form of cabinet secretaries. So essentially, if you see uh, Nahumicha saying anything, I can assure you that it is not Nahumicha talking, that the, the, the problem is much elsewhere. And, and, and I mean, I asked my colleagues there, how much money are we talking about here? And they tell me reliably that if the government was to pay everything that is required for doctors to go back to work, something like four billion shillings. Now, from where I sit as a chair, chairperson of the uh, rural and urban private hospitals, 
uh, that is, you know, uh, peanuts. Because we, on the other hand, are claiming something to the tune of 29 billion. Now, if, <laughs> if the government of Kenya cannot pay 4 billion to get interns and doctors back to work, how are they going to pay 29 billion to get patients receiving care? So I can tell you what's happening here. What's happening here is that there's a financial crisis at the heart of government, and somebody's not being honest. The reality of the matter is that Nagumita is being told, Ekelea tu wako, kanyaga tu bado kana kumua. You see? That is by somebody higher up than her. Because, let me, let me tell you the reality. In our case as, as, a, as hospitals, we, are, we, are, we have been putting pressure on NHIF to pay bills. Uh, but we have come to understand that even putting pressure on NHIF is a fool's errand. Because NHIF just doesn't have the money. NHIF is pleading with the National Treasury to release money. And guess who the National Treasury answers to? I do not think that the National Treasury wakes up in the morning and says, ah, today we feel like paying doctors. No, 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 no. These decisions are made much, much higher up. So I would, I would ask uh, my colleagues, and this we have learned as a, from experience as providers, to start backing up the correct tree. This is not Nahumicha's problem. This is actually... So which is that right tree? I, th I think the back stops in state house, you know, if, if you ask me. Because today my understanding is, uh, if you are a cleaner in state house, you might actually have more information than the CSL. You know, if you are uh, working as a, especially this group of people called advisors to the president, they are totally more powerful than any cabinet secretary. So what we have uh, here is, even if you replaced, let's say, Nahumicha with uh, Florence Bore, you know, you just switch them around. It's not going to change. Same script. So what we need is commitment from the highest level of government, highest level of government, to sort out these issues. Because what, you know, this is a money problem and somebody needs to be instructed, release money, prioritize the health sector. As the strike is happening, I'll tell you what the reality on the ground. We as private sector account for about 55% of healthcare services. Today with the strike, we are doing 90% of healthcare provision. Our hospitals are busting at the brims with patients who don't have an NHIF card, don't have money. So we are in a critical, critical situation. So imagine this, we have gone for six months without payments, and now suddenly we are flooded. We need to onboard locomers to work uh, for extra hours. We need now to start uh, buying drugs at very high, you know, increasing volumes. Mm -hmm. This crisis is a cash crisis, and the only person, the only people who have the power to authorize payments are far higher up than Nahumita's pay grade. Mm. This is the reality. All right. And not as, as we take a break to listen to some of the concerns that other people have said, when we come back, we'll continue the conversation trying to look for solutions. Um, we told that back in the, the doctors are back in the wrong tree, that um, there is some, someone more powerful than the CS. Listen to this. As it is today, our what we call maternal mortality rates, that is how many women die out of every 100,000 women who uh, deliver uh, live births, is a very high number, it's about 355. <laughs> 